Hi, I'm Erin Blanchfield, and I'm in Jersey City. Look, Thomas, nice to meet you. How are you? Good. That's right. BC's getting mic'd up over there. Erin Blanchfield in the flesh, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you. I mean, I know it's like a sit down, so I know it's kind of probably like more relaxed, just kind of talking, maybe getting to like know my background. Look, you got a big uh, piece of fuzz on your lower right this? chest there. Yeah. So happens you got two dogs, motherfucker. Yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> Can I see the wide real quick? Well, I look like Gandalf. What? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's this is crazy. There's also a loose spring on that chair, so you get a little. Uh, yeah, you get a little extra action in the back. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> What was this called, especially the green matcha uh, ice cream latte? <laughs> I thought it was going to be something, you know, like an afternoon dessert. It tastes like uh, the bottom of a tire. It's great. Mm, nice. <laughs> Matcha's like hit or miss. Yeah. How old do I look? 49. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. you know what? No is the answer. It's okay. a compliment considering how old. No, I mean, she aged me seven years. Oh, she said 49? 49, yeah, that's motherfucker. 39. Oh, all right. She was like, you should be in a fucking wheelchair already. Wow, 49. That's, a, that's cool blood in that yeah, chair. Right yeah, fucking A. Yeah, wow, all right. Well, our next guest is just. I mean, beating the shit out of people in yeah. the women's flyweight division in the UFC, absolutely battering Molly McCann when the UFC was back here in New York. And we were like, well, we got to we gotta talk to this person, this maniac who's doing these incredible things all less than 25 years of age. It is uh, the pride of New Jersey. It's Aaron Blanchfield. Hi, Aaron. How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm good. How are you? You are from what part of New Jersey? I'm from Elwood Park, New Jersey. Elwood Park. Yeah. So is that like Jersey Shore? Is that like... Yeah, where are you no. in the equi- Jersey Is uh, it like near Patterson? Because you could die in Patterson pretty easily. Right? I'm, I'm pretty close to Patterson. Yeah, that's definitely not a safe place, but um, I'm close to there. I'm more North Jersey. It's close to like the city. I'm like half hour from like New York City. Yes, yeah, so I'm nowhere near the shore, really. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's the reputation of like Jersey City? Like when you pulled up on this street, the first time I did, I'm like, you know, what kind of company am I working with? Here? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Jersey City is definitely a little bit of a rough city. I know it has like, uh, it's been coming up a little bit, but um, yeah, it definitely has a little bit of a rough reputation. Oddly, it feels like yeah. home though. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell her about what the guy across the street was doing one time. We were recording on the roof. I'll probably skip yeah. that part. But I will say this. The the rent in Jersey, did you hear it's the most expensive in the country? I'm not doing a bit. It's the most yeah, expensive Jersey in the country. Jersey City it is, okay? Jersey yeah. City. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's five grand a month. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. Well, what I the know. hell's going on? It's like, dude, Jersey yeah. City's half crime. It's location, too. It's just being close to the city. Yeah, well, yeah. all right. I, I think. All right, can know. we not take another step forward without celebrating the moment you gave us as UFC fans, Aaron? Not <laughs> just you. slicing up them meatballs, which we can get into, but that walk-off, like, <laughs> if I don't, your, your, your beautiful mother's in the room, so apologies. But you're like, motherfucker, cold-blooded. I mean, that was badass. Did you think it would have, like, it's, I mean, it's, it's not quite, th- like, Thug Rose, but it was like a moment where we're like, oh, shit, you know, she's for real, and she's, she's kind of cold-blooded. I mean, was that a calculated moment right there, that walk-off? Uh, you know, I, I remember kind of talking about that in the gym before, but I didn't really, like, think of doing it. Um in that fight, but it, I think it was just like, I mean, I didn't really let the crowd and stuff bother me too much before the fight, but everyone was booing me. I know even when I was like in the cage and like I had her in crucifix and I was, the crowd was silent whenever I was like winning. Then I remember she like got her arm out for a second. I could hear everybody cheering and I was like, fuck you guys. Like I was like <laughs> definitely annoyed. So then got her right back. I was elbowing her again. So then when I got, usually like after a finish, especially I'm a little bit more emotional, but this one, I think I was just like kind of pissed and I was like happy that I finished it as close as I did. So I think that's kind of why that reaction came. I was, I was going to say, were you surprised being then typically the Jersey fighters get cheered in New York, but yeah. you did not. No, I wasn't too surprised. And I know how popular like Molly was and I know how much like that there she was getting hyped up. Uh, so I knew that like that she would have a bunch of fans and then any like other random people that were there that didn't know me would just kind of like jump on that bandwagon. So I knew I was probably going to get some booze um, and I definitely did. But, uh, you know, I mean, it was worth it at the end. So, I mean, you did just win. And this is no disrespect for Ma- to Molly, it's about you, but, I mean, you kicked her ass. You know, she was a fighter who was riding a lot of hype, and you you ended that. Did, was it easier than you thought? I mean, you, you end up having this moment that announces you as an absolutely legitimate contender in this division, but in your, in your mind coming in, it was going to be that easy? Uh, I mean, I knew that I was much better than her everywhere, and I wanted to make a statement like that. Um, I knew that I could put on that performance. It was just kind of like doing everything right, making the right decisions at the right time. And I knew that, I just wanted to show that I was on a different level than someone like her. When you say you knew you were better, how did you know? Uh, I mean, just from like watching tapes and watching her previous fights and knowing the opponents she's had versus like the opponents I've had, that makes a big difference too. Um, 
So I just knew the skills that I brought into that fight, and I knew she just couldn't hang with that. So walk me through the fight. The first time you locked up with her, like, you knew you knew going into the fight you were going to win, right? Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Well, a lot of fighters feel that way. In fact, yeah. all the ones we talk to all feel that way. But yeah. at what point during the fight could you realize this this is not going to go well for her? Like, is there, was there some, like, line you crossed or some physical interaction that could tell you that? Um, well, I know even when we first, like, when the ref basically said go, I kind of, like, cut an angle and I could tell – Right away that she wasn't as aggressive as like uh, I remember her watching in uh, her previous fights, um, and I was just kind of catching my shots. I ca caught her with a couple da like double jab crosses, um, and I remember she swung a couple times. I got out of the way. There was like really nothing there, and kind of see everything was like she kind of like threw everything from her hip. That's even that that uh, like the shot that I got from the one double leg I landed. Um, she kind of like stepped back and like went to like load up on this overhand, and I knew like the second that she went to load up that I could duck right under that and take her down. It was like super slow, super choreographed. Um, and when I saw that, I knew the fight was kind of mine. I was like, if she's doing that, like she's not gonna be able to change that within this like 15 minutes if it went that long. Mm. Um, so I got that double leg and then when we were on the ground, I could just tell she didn't really have anything for me. She was kind of like, she was flaring, she was trying to fight, she's tough, but um, she didn't really have any like anything there. You know, when you see Dave Portnoy of Bar Barstool, who's always wearing the patty wig, and mm -hmm. they back Molly hard. Was it was that like extra motivation to uh, not just shut them up as the sort of representation of her, but to be like, hey, while you guys are you know throwing out some cash and representation, I'm cold blooded as shit, motherfucker. Yeah. Her mom's here, dude. She swore too. Okay, yeah. right, fair enough. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, she's heard it all. <laughs> Uh, she grew up in Spanish Harlem, so I'm sure it's not too. Oh, all right. I mean, yeah. what are we? I mean, this is <laughs> this, this is yeah. G-related yeah. talk compared yeah. to that. Well, I mean, but but the, but the overall thing is this. I mean, that's that's Madison Square Garden. That's yeah. a breakthrough victory, and you seem very unfazed from the celebration to the nickname. Mm -hmm. uh, for somebody your age at this early point in your career, they might not be as confident in there. What what like? How do you describe how this is just sort of like what you do? This is you turn pro at eighteen. Yeah. You're you're still just a handful of years into the sport, yeah. and now you're entering the title picture. How is it that you know this is what I do? This is what you do. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that no, easy. Just, honestly, yeah. I mean, I've been training since I was like seven years old and um, competing, like basically since I started, like six months after I started training, I was already competing. Um, and you know, I saw the UFC kind of blow up with, especially with women like Ronda Rousey and stuff when I was like twelve, thirteen or so. Um, so I always kind of knew that's what I wanted to do. And I knew the level was at, and I had other like pro fighters and stuff that I kind of knew that I trained at gyms with. So I kind of like could see what they were doing, like the levels that people were at. So I, I always felt pretty confident. And when I went to compete, I was doing pretty well. So like I knew the level was at, and I knew, uh, how much better I could get and progression I could make. So that always kind of gave me confidence. And I was always, I love training. So I'm always in the gym getting better. So that kind of gives me a lot of confidence too. Uh, going into fights and like moving up the rankings. Um, so yeah, honestly, it is just kind of like what I do. Uh, I kind of I feel like I've seen it since I was like a kid, and I'm just kind of like actually doing it now. Walk me through the uh, your first time going to the gym. How, how, set up the circumstances, and do you remember it as vividly yeah. as some fighters do? I definitely do. Um, I know I was dancing before that, so I danced from when I was like. What kind of dance? I did ballet and tap. Ballet and tap. Yeah, so when I was like... My, my dog, I have a three-year-old doing ballet and tap. Yeah, I started when I was yeah. three, yeah. That means funny, next is jujitsu for her, Luke. Oh, okay. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. My daughter's going to beat the shit out of me eventually. All right, here we go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I did ballet and tap from when I was like three till I was like six, seven-ish, I, I think. And then I quit that. I, my parents asked me if I wanted to sign back up. And I was just kind of like bored with it. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And uh, my little brother just started training at the time. Uh, he was a couple of years younger than me. And I went to just go watch him at the gym one day. And... Um, it was kind of like, they, they were a little bit more of like a karate place, but they taught some like jiu-jitsu and kickboxing and stuff. So they still, everyone walked around with their like belts and stuff. So I remember walking in and there was like a girl with a black belt on. And I was like, I went to my dad. I was like, oh my gosh, like girls can have black belts. Like I didn't know girls even really did it. Cause I guess I, in my mind, I just thought like guys did like karate or whatever. Um, so yes, yeah, so I went and I watched him and then she actually like offered, she was like, oh, do you want to like try like a little introductory kind of class? Um, and I tried it. And then honestly, I was just hooked after that. At what point did you real, not like when you're performing well, at what point did it dawn on you like I'm better than most of them? Um, Not till I was a little older. Uh, I'd say like 12, 13 when I started competing in the, well, I was already competing in grappling tournaments, but then I started throwing into like women's divisions and I was winning them too. So, so you I, went from like kids grappling to yes. like actual adult women. Yes, yeah. like adult women when I was like 12, 13 years old and I was like winning some, I'm not everything, but I would win some matches, win some divisions. Um, And I knew then that I was, 
definitely like I could do it if I wanted to. Okay. Or some people yeah. never cross that threshold to go from, okay, dance, loved it, jujitsu is fun, I'm winning tournaments, grappling, but then getting punched in the face, which is part of the job. You know, it <laughs> yeah. might be different if you came up in boxing at a very young age. Was that transition just like, like nothing for you? Yeah, so when I first started training, it was, um, they taught like no gi jitsu and kickboxing. So I was already kind of always getting like, we didn't get punched in the face as a kid, but we were already like sparring like to the body and stuff. Um, and then when I was like a little, when I was like a younger teenager, probably like 13, 14, I started like sparring, like full, full contact sparring. Um, so it's something I've kind of always been used to. I know like even when I got into May, everyone kind of like pinned me as more of a jitsu person that never really did any striking. But that's not necessarily true. I, I did it all growing up too. Uh, so it wasn't really something I had to like get used to. So was Ronda Rousey versus Liz Carmouche, 2013, I believe, first UFC women's yeah, fight. I think it's yeah. like you're I you're probably a young teenager at this point, but you're in the com combat space in different uh, disciplines. Is that a moment where you're like, I remember where I was and I remember what it made me feel? What, what, what's your situation for that? Uh, yeah, for that. Actually, the first one I really remember because like my dad was always super into UFC, so he always watched it, but I didn't really watch it until I got a little older. Um, he used to watch UFC and he'd watch like Strike Force and stuff too. He'd watch all the MMA organizations. So I remember watching uh, Ronda Rousey and Misha Tate for the first time. Mm. And yeah, I was like, I, f I forgot how old I was, but I was probably like a young teenager. And I remember watching that and being like, oh, like that's so cool. Like I know I could do that. And then when Rousey got into UFC and I saw Carmouche, I remember like, I think I watched both of them like at my house, like in my living room, like sitting there like, oh my gosh, like I could do that too if I want to, you know what I mean? Um, this is the first I was already... generation her age, 23 years mm -hmm. old, first yeah. generation of people who had that moment, yeah. it's like the Beatles and Ed Sullivan show for our parents, Luke, those old. I don't, I, no, I'm not that old. Okay. I mean, she, before the show, I was like, Aaron, how old am I? She's like 75 fair men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's a little bit harsh, but Well, I checked quite. Wikipedia. Yeah. I was 21 when she was born, so, you know. You I'm, were born in 1999? Yes. I was in my sophomore year of college. Yeah, yeah. So, so her guess on 49 may not be that far. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I, can I say it's unfair? I can't say it's unfair. All right, so you're a young teen. You're seeing all these formative things. Yeah. You know, I mean, around the time of high school, you don't have to set out your life, but mm -hmm. everything's exciting because it's the next adult chapter of your life. You knew from the moment around high school, it sounds like, that yeah. this was going to be your future. When did you begin to realize and, and accept or even like uh, seek out the idea of this is going to be a profession for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like honestly, even when I got into high school, I already kind of knew that uh, I would train with even like the wrestling team a little bit because I knew some of the coaches that from gyms that I trained at previously. Um, so I feel like all throughout high school, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. And I honestly kind of just, I mean, I always trained. I always took it serious. I always competed in what I could because I couldn't do MMA yet because you have to be 18, uh, like around here to uh, fight MMA. I feel like if I could do it younger, I definitely would have. Um, but I did like kickboxing fights, Muay Thai fights and just grappling tournaments. Um, but I always knew that I may like right after high school and like once I was 18, I wanted to do that. When you said you did the other competitions, we're talking like mm -hmm. kickboxing in like shin pads and stuff like that on amateur rules? Uh, yes, I did amateur rules. I did do one like Muay Thai fight with no shin guards when I was like 17. Um, so I had some experience with that before. Yeah. When you told your, fo I mean, did you have a conversation with your folks? Like, I'm going to do this. Uh, not really. I think they just always knew, like, because we always watched fighting, and my dad was super into it. So he would always drive me around to the gyms and stuff too. He always he knew how much uh, how into it I was, and they both loved it. They'd always come watch me fight and compete. Uh, so it wasn't even something we had to talk about. It was just kind of like, no, like if I didn't do it, it would have been weird. I think you know what I mean. Cause do they go to so, your fights? Oh yeah, they love it. They come to all my fights. They've always. They must asked. drive them crazy though when you're in the middle of battle. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty used to it now. I think the last one definitely uh, bothered my mom a little bit because of the crowd uh, booing me and stuff. But um, but yeah, they love watching me fight. It's never been like a problem. We, we're all, I mean, my little brother always, he corners me in all my fights. He uh, he competed all growing up and stuff too. Um, so it's kind of like a whole family thing. We're all into it. Oh, your dad didn't, your dad was just a fan? Yeah, no, my dad was just, my dad did some little boxing stuff when he was a kid, um, but he didn't like compete or anything. He's just always been a fan and um he just supported me and my brother. Well, he right? set out his fandom turned into something pretty <laughs> remarkable. I have to say, you and yeah. your brother, right? Yeah. Is your brother going to fight pro eventually too? Uh, well, he's in college right now. I think he's uh, he's studying like criminal justice, so he might kind of like stay that route. But um, but he always he always trains and he teaches at uh, some of the gyms we uh, train at too. Uh, so he's kind of like involved in the life for sure. Remarkable. Okay. I love yeah. it. Like her youth kind of normalizes whatever stigma used to be there of MMA. I mean, even to this day, we talk in our life circles when we go drop our kids off and you meet the other dads like, what do you do for a living? And, you know, everybody's like a executive at an insurance company. And I'm like, you know, 
cover mixed martial arts. So like that cage fight and bullshit. It's like, yeah, you know what I mean? But like you grew up going, you know what? I could be that seeing it on TV. You have the family support. That's refreshing to hear in this space. You, uh, what was yeah. high school like for you? Because I'm guessing that you must have had a bit of a rep as someone who trained, right? Like yeah, not cold blooded rep. Did you have yeah. cauliflower ears in high school? I didn't have cauliflower ears. I actually didn't get that till I was like 20. So okay. I, yeah, so I started Still, fighting. you must have had a bit of a rep. Right? I, I definitely did because I already had like some kickboxing fights going into high school and they were all like on YouTube and stuff. Oh, so, shit. So the kids saw my fights. So Luke's got this this yeah. thing he says, you know, fuck around and find out. Sorry, mom, <laughs> again. Um, did, did some of these girls, you know, these Jersey girls find out? Honestly, no. Th no one actually like picked a fight with me or anything. I went to Catholic school too. So it was like a smaller school. Um, so there wasn't too many people. Uh, and the people that knew, like everybody knows each other. So everybody knew I fought. So I don't think any of the girls like wanted any trouble. So you went to an all girls school? No, it wasn't. It was co-ed, but. Um, but like the, was it sort of, was it like gender segregated? No, no, oh, not was, at okay, all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just like, you just had to wear a uniform. We're we talking about unisex bathrooms. Where are we going? No, no, no. I'm just yeah. saying, um, like, did you go to, like, I don't know. I always find if you went to like an all boys or an all girls school, like that's a, that's kind of a weird experience, right? No? Probably wouldn't be. Yeah, I don't know. All right. You give me this look like this is some you know, kind of crazy line of question. Town, we had chemicals in the water. We tried our best. All right. All right. <laughs> let me, uh, let me ask you here just a little bit about, I, I would love to pick your brain about something, which I think you're at the vanguard of. It's, uh, okay. it's you and like handful of other ones, really in the entire sport, which is. And you know this to be true. Now, Rhonda is the exception because Rhonda was the Olympian, right? Mm -hmm. So let's we, we, we give her um, and, and some, so something of a pioneer. I mean, there was pioneers before her, but generationally she was the level up, you know? Mm -hmm. Women's wrestling in MMA. Yeah. And what I mean by that is when I first started covering it, it was barely existent. Marlouz yeah. Kunin could wrestle a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was a couple of other figures. It could be Fuji E, even though BC hates her. Why do I hate her? Just because I don't think she's one of the three greatest female fighters of all time? But, but she is. But the point being I'm trying to make is the current crop of young, there's like you and, and uh, Miranda Maverick, who you fought, obviously, mm -hmm. and some other ones as well, that are actually leading with straight up wrestling. It's a major sign that the women's game is rapidly catching up with the men's game. What do you, what do you make about um, what your predecessors could do in wrestling versus what your generation could do? Do you even really agree with my premise that this is a thing that you guys are beginning to change? Uh, I, I definitely think we're just more well-rounded in general. Um, I think like, especially now, like I feel including myself and maybe even people that are younger than me, like we kind of, you can end up growing up doing all of it. I feel like a lot of people, uh, previous generations kind of like how Rhonda was like, grew up doing judo. She didn't really do anything else until she was much older. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of the, a lot of the younger fighters are growing up doing jitsu, doing wrestling, doing striking. Um, and yeah, I mean, wrestling maybe like to certain body types kind of lends itself more like Maverick's a shorter fighter, uh, kind of like lends itself more to like clinches kind of like myself. Um, and the club I go to, uh, is also Cordoba train. Like they have a lot of, uh, female wrestlers. Like I think it's kind of new too for females to be wrestling. Like they didn't really have any girls in wrestling before. So your high school didn't have a program. They, uh, they only had it for like a year or two. I was there cause it was a small school. So then there wasn't enough kids signing up. So they ended up having to cancel it. Um, but even when I was there, they did allow me to train, but I was be the only girl that trained. Right. Uh, they didn't have any other girls, uh, nobody that competed. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of like something that's changing. Honestly, even bef like before I was like, yeah, when I was, when I was in school, it wasn't even like that. There's a lot more girls wrestling and stuff now. So I think in the next generations, you'll see a lot more like female wrestlers that can definitely like, I mean, with wrestling kind of control a fight. So what, what do you see? It was like, we do look back at Rhonda's generation compared to yours. You just, yeah. it's the overall world roundedness. Like there's nothing in particular that stands out. <sighs> I mean, not really, because I think they're like, you can definitely tell they're not well-rounded because like the things that they weren't proficient in, like growing up, they're kind of, they're very sloppy in. Because um, I remember even like watching fights when I was younger and being like, oh my gosh, this is like so crazy. They're so good. And I watch them now. It's like, I can appreciate what they did, but I can, I see so many mistakes. I see so many things that they could have done better. Um, they just based off all my experience that I have now. So I think it really is just being the well-roundedness of people coming up now versus then. Do you ever watch uh, Griffin Bonner? The alleged famous fight. I, uh, I know, I know of it, but I haven't watched it. You, you know, it's it, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Like in real time, right? In yeah. real time, it was the craziest thing you'd ever seen in your life. Oh my God, set the yeah. house on fire. Mm -hmm. And now, when you watch it, it's like, I don't know if these guys would get a contract yeah. on the Contender Series. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Like it's that far apart. It, it yeah. barely looks like the same sport anymore. It's like mm -hmm. watching like Porky's. It was really fun when I was a kid and funny. I mean, now it's just like crude and ridiculous. <laughs> you know, Luke. You ever I, watched I, the eighties like, movies? They don't hold up comedically, even though we grew up with them because we're old pieces of crap, but like, they just don't hold up. You know? uh, not any that I can name off. Have you ever done that humanizing athletes thing with Alexander Bahunin? 
where they like no. favorite movie, favorite drink, blah blah blah. Oh, I remember not this last fight week, but the fight week before. They they like gave us they put like uh, pictures of like '90s stars, and they try to like have me name all of them, and I I did pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can you name one member of the Wu Tang Clan? Oh no! Wow! Holy shit! I don't even okay. know what that is. Na- <laughs> You don't know? You never heard of Wu Tang Clan? Apparently no. not for the children, Liz. You know, dude. ODB would be disappointed <laughs> in you. Uh, name one movie Harrison Ford has starred in. I don't know. You don't. <laughs> Maybe I know. All right, his face. I got I it. Know. Name the, the president name. before Obama. Oh, that was George Bush. Okay. Okay, yeah. we're back. Then, we're back. And then we're before. Back. And then before him. Um. The Arkansas Clinton? guy. Yeah, the Arkansas. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. Bryce Mitchell. Yeah, got yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, Aaron, I grew up in Connecticut, but as a fellow tri-stater, I don't yeah. get to hold that over you because I grew up in an absolutely shitty area. Okay. But when I think of Jersey, you know, people are always like, oh, armpit of the country and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, defend Jersey for me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Jersey's all that bad. I mean, I loved where I grew up. I feel like it's kind of nice. I, I was able, I had like the city close by, so I was able to always go there, being kind of come back to Jersey where it's a little quieter. Uh, I mean, we have the shore where everyone around here comes all summer long. And um, what's the most Jersey thing about you? Oh, great Ooh. question. Does it involve a Wawa? I, <laughs> yeah, I love Wawa. I love Quick Check. Uh, I mean, I love going down the shore. I mean, right after my fight in June, the first thing I did that Monday was go down the shore. So, yeah, wow. I love the beach. How many people on the Jersey Shore are not on steroids? That's what I want to know. Uh, no, there's plenty. I mean, I think it's just the Jersey Shore show definitely uh, blew up that stereotype of it. But, yeah, I can, I can only yeah. imagine. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk more about some of the contemporaries here, right? Okay. All right. So, uh, I'm not sure. Where, where, do you know where, where, where are you ranked as of the recording of this video? I think I'm number 10. Number two. That's it? Yeah. I hear some, I read some rumors, though, today online. Like, you could be getting in line for, like, a top five number one contender-ish fight. That's what people are saying, right? Is that, have yeah. you heard something like that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've signed some contracts already. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, breaking news on the uh, back you could tell us? Okay. Uh, I mean, I haven't been told that I can't, so I guess, I mean, I signed a new four-fight deal, and I signed to fight Talia Santos. Whoa, yeah. okay, this is, this okay. is... That's the yeah. deep end of the pool, Aaron, yeah. which I don't expect you're nervous about. But um, when you look at a fighter like Tyler Santos, who pushed the champion, Valentina Shevchenko, and made her human, really, for like mm-hmm. the first time uh, in this division. Well, yeah. she'd had... In this division. Jennifer Maya had had a couple of moments. There was, uh, a hu- there was a glimpse of humanizing moments there, but it went but away. But yeah, like taking the champs back for an extended period of time. I mean, there was a point we were wondering if the champ could walk on water. Seriously, in this division, it got to that point. It's true. Then Tyler Santos shows up. This is a big fight. This is a big step if this is the direction they go. What are you, what are you feeling? Uh, no, I mean, when they offered it to me, I mean, I, as long as I have, I love to have notice. I like to have a full camp so I can be prepared for anybody. Um, but as long as I have that, I, I know I can beat anybody in the world. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely hyped for it. That's sort of... Ain't no thing with a chicken with a string. I know, you're straight. taking it yeah. very nonchalantly. Yeah, <laughs> this I'll is how she lives her life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, let's yeah. talk about her game. Size her up for me. What are you up against? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, she's a little bit taller than me. I'm like 5'4". She's 5'6". Uh, she's she's a striker, but she has some good wrestling. Uh, some like She likes her takedowns off the cage. Uh, her jiu-jitsu is decent. Um, I mean, she's well-rounded, but I don't think she's necessarily dangerous. So let me ask this. Why was she able to take the back of the champion, mm-hmm. A, so consistently? Yeah. And B, I know that it was the body triangle, but... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't personally believe in the argument that like, oh, well, they had him in the body triangle. That explains the entirety of riding time. Like, Mm -hmm. it's also a choice to not fight it as much as Shevchenko did. Mm -hmm. She chose to not really fight it that hard. Okay, so how was she able to be this proficient against ostensibly the best person in this division? Uh, I mean, I think she's. I think she was a little bit bigger than Valentina. I don't think Valentina cut much weight. Uh, Talia looked a little bigger than her. Talia has pretty good cage wrestling. I think she was able to take Valentina off the cage a couple times with that. Um, and then Valentina also went for a bunch of headlocks where she got her back taken right. off of, which I think was. Uh, I think that was pretty dumb. Was she rattled? You think? I mean, we never see yeah. her make a misstep. No, I mean, I think it, she's hit it in fights before without having to pay for it. But Talia was just a little bit too good that she was going to get her back taken off of it. And she did that a couple times. So I think that's. Kind of where she got her back taken. Um, and then she just didn't really know how to fight off a body lock. She didn't know which side to go to. She didn't know really how to fight the hand. So she just kind of started punching and just would stay there. So, um, Did think, you think Tyler won that fight? When I was watching it live, I definitely 
thought Talia like edged it out. When I watched it again, I could see how they maybe gave it to Jake Chinka. It was it was super close. Um, I mean, if I was judging it, I probably would have gave it to Talia just because like the ground control. What about the idea that there's ground control? Like for example, like what you did with Molly. It's not that <laughs> mm-hmm. you progressed into position and then and then through position, mm-hmm. but you were smashing her. You were like battering yeah. her. Mm-hmm. And then obviously there you there's you, uh, not just that fight, but you know you can do submissions as well. Like you're. The scoring criteria is really beginning to change, right? It's a big yeah. debate that we're having on shows like this where, man, control time is great. And then having, especially having the back with the body triangle, like referees won't really stand you up from there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how much value the judges are putting on that if you're not battering someone behind it. Like, do you, do you feel any, like, it hasn't been an issue for you, mm-hmm. but now you're going to head to the very deep end of the pool. It looks like pretty quickly here. That seems more important than ever, No. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, when she had her back, she wasn't really throwing much. She wasn't, I mean, she was trying for the chokes, but she wasn't being like, uh, like kind of meticulous about it. She's kind of like throw it on quick and it wasn't really on. Uh, so Valentina definitely threw a lot more strikes. Maybe that's what the judge gave it to her. Um, but yeah, you just need to be pre- precise in like every position. You need to be hitting or you need to be going for submissions. You can't really be content with staying there. It almost kind of, it looks almost like lazy maybe to the judges. Uh, you're just kind of like content, like, oh, I'm okay here. Like I'll just stay here and like take a break. Um, so you can't really take breaks. I mean, you're only fighting for 15 or 25 minutes and you train for how long for that? So it's like you should be able to go. Like a you feel like you have, you and your team have a full handle on not only what the letter of the law of the scoring criteria says and means, but that the judges are, you know, we see a lot of debate of Douglas Crosby had a, some headlines in both Bellator and UFC on consecutive nights where people are calling into question, maybe some judges have different strike zones that just aren't accurate to the rules. Is there ever a part of you that's, you know, that's, do you strategize for that? Basically trying to, I mean, like sometimes we debate all the time if we have it right or if the judges have it right in terms of just what we should be looking at. Uh, yeah, I mean, you never really know. There's different judges every time. So it's like, you. I mean, you know what you need to do to win a fight and you kind of, you don't want to leave it to the judges. That's what I always try to think. I always want to like finish the fight no matter what. And whenever, like if there's time left on the clock, I'm going to try to finish it just so I don't have to leave it to them. Um, yeah, I mean, you just have to, you have to fight smart and just try to win. I mean, the, you can only do so much to see, to kind of like make the judges think you won. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You just have to fight smart and win, like try to finish them. How far away do you think you are? Because I know you, you're going to say that you believe you're going to be champion, right? Yes. Okay, right. How far away are you? Um, you know, if the Tali fight happens and I beat her, um, I mean, I could probably fight for the title next or maybe one more fight. Um, if they want me to fight someone else like in the top five. So like if, if my math is correct, right, we're, we're going to be in January here pretty soon. Yes. Us. It is at least conceivable, or based on your timeline, it could happen next year. Could. Uh, yeah, next year or maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, if I only have, if they, it depends if after I win this fight, if they give me a title fight next, it could even be this year. I mean, it depends, but 2024 probably be latest, yeah. You're so young that it's, in theory, your game's just going to keep getting better and evolving. Mm-hmm. But yet, you know, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm ready for the title now. Like, how self-conscious are you at some of your own things that you're improving in your game? Uh, I mean, you feel like it, it's ready right now, as is the the, the shortened the game. But what you know, what do you feel like you need to work on? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, I learned something from every fight. I feel like uh, now it's just kind of gaining experience, like in the UFC and uh, with high-level fighters. I mean, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, it's soon, but it's like I've done everything soon. I got, I went pro at 18 um, where a lot of people wouldn't do that or like people didn't really want me to necessarily. Um, but, you know, I know the level I'm at and I know um, what I've gained from the experiences that I did put myself into just by competing with the best. Um, and I know I can beat the best and it's like, what's the worst thing that happen, you know? You see a lot of young people come to the UFC and sometimes they grow into the role and sometimes mm-hmm. they, get, they get swallowed. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Why do the ones who get swallowed, why does that happen to them? Uh, you know, maybe they didn't know how to take losses. It depends. I think a lot of people, they'll get into the UFC maybe like undefeated and they take their first loss like in the big show and they just don't know how to deal with it. Uh, you know, I mean, I've... But how do yeah. you, how, how do you deal with it? You do um, have one on your record. How, yeah. how did you deal with it? Um, I mean, you just go back, you watch it over and you try to get better from it. Um, there's not much else to do. I mean, all growing up, I mean, I've lost, I don't even know how many times, you know what I mean? But I feel like you learn the most from your losses and you kind of like, you have to hone in after those. I know after like my loss, I definitely like honed in and I like tried to figure out what I want to do with my training schedule and stuff so I can improve in the things that I felt like I needed to improve on, uh, like what my coaches thought I needed to do. Um, so yeah, as long as she's going back to the gym and improving like I, I do after a loss or a win, it's just kind of like, you almost have to, you can't treat it too, like you can't take it too hard. You know what I mean? You have to just take it for what it is, um, and get better from it and just come back. You can't let it, I think maybe some people let it get in their head, but, um, 
But I mean, it's just one fight. You have you can always redeem yourself. Also, I'll say this: one of the benefits of like doing this as a kid mm-hmm. or as a teenager or something like that is that you can lose in a grappling tournament or or even like amateur Muay Thai fight, but you won't get like I mean, you know. I remember you said after your fight with Molly that you thought the referee was going to be in trouble for stopping it late because you were like just demolishing her. Mm-hmm. A, a bad loss like that early in a career, it can mess certain people up too, right? So there's a certain yeah. like danger in being 21 years old and taking a fight against a, another grown man, right? That's the only thing that I would add. Yeah, it's true. I never really thought of it like that. Um, yeah, that might kind of mess with your head. But there, I mean, there's other fighters now that probably like they've lost their first pro fight and now they're on multiple wins. I think it just kind of depends how you take it. I think Cyborg lost her first fight, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I kind of remember Cyborg, I think, got finished in her first fight. She might have, yeah. yeah. Your only loss can be noteworthy to some. It came in 2019 under the Invicta banner because it came against current UFC fighter Tracy Cortez, who's unbeaten one weight class below you, correct? Or is she in your weight class? No, she's in my weight class. She's in your weight class now. Um, Are you the type of competitor where... You're, you're still holding the receipt. Majority decision loss to Tracy. You're both younger in your game at that point. I mean, are you are you hoping that comes around again? Uh, you know, if it comes around, I know I'd definitely beat her. But um, you know, I'm kind of I'm trying to make sure I keep moving up the rankings. If she ends up in the same spot where I end up having to fight her, I definitely will. But um, I'm not gonna like chase backwards or anything. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Dude, just like yeah. Yeah. just like. What was the biggest lesson from that fight? <laughs> um, you know, I think a lot of times I kind of. I think I was a little bit of a slow starter in some of my fights, and for that one, it definitely uh, didn't help me. I lost that first round, and, and I didn't know if I lost, like, the second or th- – I forgot. I know the third I definitely won, um, but I think I just have to be a little bit more, like, vigilant. I mean, I definitely have done a much better job since that fight, um, but I definitely had to be a little bit more vigilant going into my fights. Uh, my wrestling definitely got better after that fight, and then just my – I mean, I feel like everything improved overall. Um but yeah, I know I just I needed to kind of like take it a little. And I was also 19 years old, so I think I had to like just take it a little bit more serious. I mean, I already took it serious, but I think I had to really hone in if I wanted to compete at the highest levels. Um, I think it kind of like gave me a little reminder of what I want to be um, and what I have to do to do be able to be that. I think it's pretty fair. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, look, I mentioned when we bring back to Shevchenko, the champion of this division, one of the best of all time, to be fair. Mm-hmm. But she was humanized in the fight with Tyler Santos. But I don't think that would have mattered for you based on your confidence so young of that's the goal, that's the person I'm chasing. You've been using her name in interviews going back a while. I mean, you know, you can watch the tape and see her human against Tylee or you can watch Jessica I run right into her leg in such violent, mm-hmm. devastating fashion. Yeah. I guess, you know, you're a UFC fighter, you already passed this, but like there doesn't seem to be any cracks in your armor in terms of like, yeah, Shevchenko, bring her on, I'm ready. I mean, yeah. this is a, you know, violent, dangerous person with a handgun on her midriff tattooed and, you know, does things like knock people out with head kicks. But how are you able... the necklace where there's a bullet that hangs in the middle. How are you this calm and cool? I know I've asked that before. I just I just don't get it. It's just, is it is it just the competition aspect? Like, do you just look at this as martial arts and not look at it as the, sometimes the general public does? Oh, that's a fist fight in a cage, you know? We'll yeah. see who's the toughest. Is it still just the mindset of you, like if it's a jiu-jitsu tournament or a wrestling tournament as a kid where you're just going in there and compete? Yeah, I, I think it definitely is that. It, I, it's it's just a sport at the end of the day. I mean, there's a ref in there to save you if anything happens, uh, if you do anything to your opponent. And it's just, yeah, it's really just sport. You, they're all just other girls that have to go fight. They're nothing, like, special. That's their, you know what I mean? We're all just people. Um, I grew up competing. I grew up in sports. So I think I have a really good mindset with that. It's like I know all those other little things that people do outside are kind of like there's, like, people blow them up. They hype them up. It doesn't really mean anything. Once you're in there, you have to fight me, and it's – your, it's your skill against mine and nothing else matters. Um, I mean, even leading up to this Molly fight, people couldn't stop talking about the spinning elbows and like knockouts and how I was going to get spinning elbow next. So I was like... <laughs> Did her fans DM you? Um, no, I mean, honestly, I didn't get too much like hate or anything going into that fight. Uh, I don't really look at those too much. Uh, uh, let me give you a, p- a piece of advice, yeah. a little word of warning. Yeah. As you move up the ladder and you start beating people's favorite fighters, you're yeah. going to start getting some, you might get, you'll get a lot of praise too, but you're going to get yeah. some angry DMs from the fans. Yeah, it's yeah, I'm happen. sure. But, um, but yeah, I know leading into that fight, everyone was hyping that up. It's like, yeah, but those girls she fought were at me. Um, and it's like, you could train to like kind of defend those kind of things, uh, counter them. So it's, it's honestly just being confident in your, in your training and, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a sport. All the little theatrics around it don't matter when you're in there. Okay, well, well, you yeah. you, you scouted Tyler Santos a second ago. Yeah. Where do you think Valentina Shevchenko, the, the champion, is at at the moment in her overall arc? Like I mentioned, we saw things happen. She could have lost that fight by decision of Santos. She got the edge and advanced. Mm-hmm. How do you scout her up in relation to your game when you think of what your goal is to get to that title level and win it? Um, 
you know, if I had to like break down Valentina, I mean, she has very sharp, uh, sharp like Muay Thai, uh, primarily striker. I mean, her wrestling and stuff is not too bad either. She likes a lot of more like clinch throws, uh, not a lot of traditional like, I guess like wrestling we have like here in the states. Uh, a lot more like that probably comes from her Muay Thai. Um, her ground is decent. I mean, she's well rounded, um, but I don't think she's like as slick as uh, like as I am on the ground or as proficient as I am with wrestling. Uh, if I had to like break down both of us, um, you know, I mean, I think she's definitely at her peak right now. I mean, people uh, like someone like Talia maybe showed some things, but just because she was able to kind of show that doesn't mean she isn't still at her peak. Maybe just some of the other girls she fought weren't as good, yeah. you know, um, that's kind of what I think when I watch things like that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'd hope to get to fight her still when she's at her peak, you know, do you want to. Do you want to be the one? I guess, yeah, the answer is going to be yes. You want to yeah. be the one that beats her, right? Yes, of course. The, that, that'd be ideal. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She does have, I mean, she is a celebrated figure, irrespective of gender or division. Like, mm-hmm. she is a dominant force in the sport and has been for some time. Yeah. Taking that's got to be, I mean, that's, that would yeah. be a historic moment, right? No, for sure. I mean, I think she's been, I mean, she's pretty dominant. I'm not sure how many defenses she has, but I know she has a bunch. Um, the girls I see, like, ahead of me, I don't see any of them beating her until I get there. So, um, so I know, I, I feel like I'll be the next one. All right, there. you want all the smoke competition-wise, <laughs> and I respect that, and I'm yeah. ready to see you against them. How prepared are you or how willing are you for what comes with that, the life? I know you're saying, you know, sometimes things happen on social media, nobody really cares what, just a lot of talk. You don't seem to be a big trash talker, but are you ready for the stardom that comes with that, the pressures, the the the, the glory, the riches, all of that? How much do you think about that, that, you know, if I achieve this goal, if I end next year as the new champion, uh, my you know, my, my phone's going to ring a lot. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I haven't thought of it too much. I mean, uh, Better start. <laughs> better start. Yeah. Looks like turn off uh, those replies now on Twitter yeah, and better Instagram. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all that stuff is kind of just like, I mean, if you don't look at it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I mean, I know the money that comes with it. I just want to, you know, be able to set up my life and be comfortable in, in my own life. Um, I mean, anything else that comes with it. You know, I know, I know I can deal with it when it comes. I, I'm a pretty, if you can tell by now, I'm a pretty relaxed person. So I think anything that comes my way, I'll figure it out. I don't think, I, I mean, does anything <laughs> scare you? Because, you know, I'm afraid of like, you know, spiders and black licorice. It's just evil. You know what I mean? And, you know, um, people with tattoos on their neck, I'm still not ready for that. I'm sorry, Luke. Okay. I still don't. Well, it's because you're, yeah, you're, you're just a, you're a horrible. Oh, horror. you know what scares me? <laughs> uh, thunderstorms, you know. And un- what are you, my dog? Are you hiding <laughs> in the tub? I'm just saying, like, I have no control over it. You know what I mean? It's just sort of like yeah. got to hide in the bunker. Does anything in life scare you? Yeah, what scares What scares you? Uh, Yeah, spiders definitely scare me. I'm a big baby yeah, when it comes to bugs. Worse, like, there was, like, a bug in the gym one time, and, like, my sparring partner came, and I I literally just, like, I didn't even say hi. I was like, there's a spider on the mat. Like, that someone had to go kill it. Um but yeah, other than that, no, no fighter though, just have, fighters. Have you only ever trained in Jersey? Have like you ever cross trained other gyms, other places, and whatnot? Uh, yeah, I mean, I cross trained at uh, Henzo Gracie in uh, New York uh, a bunch, uh, like before COVID. Um, and I mean, I grew is up. Is your gym in the Henzo family? Yeah, with Silver Fox BJJ is part of like oh, the yeah. Henzo family. Yeah, so um, Silver Fox is uh, what's it's uh, is it Carl Carell Pravic? Yes, Pravich? yeah, Carl Pravic. Yeah. Um, Carl Ravich, he is. So, <laughs> it's not Carl Ravich. I, yeah. <laughs> so I train under him, um, and then one of his students, Frankie Roberts, uh, is like my primary jiu-jitsu coach. He corners me in all my fights. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would cross-train at Henzo's a uh, bunch, and then, um, yeah, I mean, all growing up, I kind of trained in all different gyms uh, around but, Jersey. But in the area? Never, you've never been down to ATT or AKA? No, no, all like in the Jersey, New York area. You ever been like, has any gym ever tried to poach you, recruit you? Um, no, no, honestly, no, not really. Um, I mean, I've had other like fighters like message me and like ask like where I train or if I wanted to go train with them, but, but no gyms really, no. You're not interested in like, um, I mean, as, <laughs> honestly, as of right now, I mean, I feel like I have everything I need here. Um, and I've been winning and, uh, I love the coaches I'm with and I've been training with them since I was like 15, 16 years old. So wow. it's like, I Who feel like your I, coaching staff. Can you shout them out? Uh, yeah. So Frankie Roberts, uh, Augie Mateus and David Cordoba are like my primary like coaches. Um, so yeah, I've been working with all of them since I was like a teenager. And we kind of like, I feel like we all almost like, cause they didn't really train like professional fighters before this. So it's, we all kind of like grew up into it together, I mm. feel like. Um, and we all work really well together. Um, Wait, but so do you train with other high level pros? Uh, well, I have, yeah, I train with uh, Fatima Klein, who's also like an Invicta fighter. Okay. Um, T- Tanisha Tenet, who's an Invicta fighter. I'm like the only like UFC fighter in like the gyms uh, that okay. I train at. Like, so let, currently. let me follow up on that. So yeah. there's a big theory, obviously, and a lot of them. Like, there's big camps and small camps, mm-hmm. but there is at least some idea, even in the small camps, that you should have, you know, 
um, other like UFC level people around you. But in mm-hmm. boxing, like Canelo doesn't bring in his peers or people at peer level to spar. He brings in people who are not necessarily on his level, and he gets a fine tuning that way. Yeah. Why do why does the rest of MMA have a bit of an idea like you got to be either a super gym or you know a cluster of like four to five guys, and you haven't done that? Why why, why does this work for you? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just, it's always kind of worked for me. I feel like I, I've been getting better with the training partners and stuff that I do have. Um, there's a couple of the guys at the gym that work really well with me. I have my brother too. Um, so honestly, it's just, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I mean, I obviously, I know, uh, of other big gyms, but I feel like in, especially in big gyms, you kind of get lost a little bit, like in, in the, in the mess of everything. Um, if you're not like a UFC champ, like you're probably not going to really get any attention because it's like, oh, you're just another UFC fighter. There's like 50 here. You know what I mean? Even Amanda Nunes, who was like, you thought would have been on top of ATT, had to yeah. set up her own facility or whatever, right? Yeah, I exactly. Mean, I feel like a lot of, yeah, even if they all do train at big gyms, they end up like kind of working out mostly at like a smaller gym so they can get some like their own attention. Um, yeah, so I feel like for me, it's kind of worked. I mean, we usually have like small sessions. It's just me, me and like a couple training partners. Um, and yeah, I feel like I can get a lot of attention, a lot. We can, I feel like we can progress so much faster because it is really just us. Um, I mean, not that I wouldn't train with anybody else, but it's, uh, like, I feel like for a daily basis thing, it's definitely been working. Um, I've been winning, so it's, uh, don't fix something that right. isn't broken kind of thing, you right, know? Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's been working for me. No, y- your brother, yeah. you said Brendan? Brendan, yeah. A couple years younger than you, amateur fighter. Mm-hmm. What what has your success done for his vision and goals for the future uh, in the fight game? Because you've made a quick leap to world class title contender. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know if he would want to go professional necessarily. I mean, I think he loves training and, and he lo- he helps me out a lot, which I uh, appreciate a lot. But um, you know, he kind of has his own life. We're we're a little different. Um, so I think he's gonna probably like. I think he's thinking about becoming a cop and stuff like that. So it's kind of more like his goals. Yeah. Uh, you're at, let me see if I got this right. You're at Montclair yeah. State? I was, yeah. You're not no longer there? No, no. All right, do you plan to go back at some point? Uh, no, not currently. Two successful college dropouts right here, Luke. Yeah. Hey, my sister, <laughs> so, too. My so sister take that while you're married. Uh, I, there's nothing, Doc, not a damn thing know, wrong. I mean, this, yeah. you're, you're yeah. killing it right now. I mean, who Thank cares? Uh, I, but you were going in to study broadcast journalism. Is that what I read? Yeah. Trying uh, to be one of the dirtbag <laughs> scumbag MMA media? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think my major was, uh, I think it was like television and digital media with like a concentration in sports media. That shit sucked, right? Uh, I, don't, I didn't mind it too much because like it? when I first went into college I was like a bio major because like I didn't even know what to do and I, I took like like AP bio in high school so I thought I was like good at it and then when I got to college and I was like thinking about what I'd want to do because I, I was already like a pro I went pro young so I was already a pro fighter and I was like well what would I want to do like after fighting so um, so I decided to switch it to like sports media um, in case I wanted a future in that um, and yeah I did that for a little bit and then once I got signed to the UFC Kinda. You're like, fuck college. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, now that you're adulting, when you have to like fill out paperwork at the doctor's office or whatever, and it says yeah. occupation, what do you, uh, yeah, what do you put? I just put professional fighter. I, I I just put what it is. Usually sometimes they'll ask me and they're kind of curious. Um, yeah, you must get a few second looks, right? Yeah, definitely. They always ask. Um, or I'll just put like, yeah. I, I think I usually, I think the last couple of times I just put professional fighter because I'm like, I guess, I mean, I don't even know what else to put. I can't you like, I can't pro, lie on you it. You could put pro athlete if you wanted to be like. I was think I know, I have thought of that, but I was like, why am I going to like hide? It's like once they, they ask like where you work and stuff. I'm like, also, I feel like a medical you know. professional should know what you do for a living. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why I don't want to lie to them either if I, if I, if I, if I something about my health. So right, like, right. Yeah, I just, I put professional Okay, fighter. for the layman out there, what's the best and worst part of the job of being a UFC fighter? Great question. I love the that. The best. Okay, the best I think is the lifestyle I get to live. I love going to the gym, be able to wake up and like kind of setting my own schedule. Uh, that's by far the best. I feel like my life is kind of like my own. I can kind of control it. Uh, I don't have like a nine to five. I feel like, especially now growing up, like all my friends have like regular jobs and stuff and they, they complain about it all the time. I'm like, I they're probably really, baristas, I, and they're like, F this. And you're I mean, like, even some of them work at, like, some law offices and stuff, but it's just, um, you know, it's it's just, like, kind of like that that grind that they have to go through. And it's, like, I have to go through my own kind, but at least it's something I love and I enjoy doing. Um, so that's what I, I definitely love about it the most. And then, um, I mean, the worst, I think, is just, like, cutting weight and dieting. Imagine or, she was like, worst yeah. thing is dealing with the scum yeah, back like, dealing with you two no. Uh, <laughs> no, that's definitely not the worst. Uh, I, was like, I was like, Dad, is that you? Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. How much weight do you cut? You can't ask uh, a woman that. Yes, uh, yes, you can. No, you can't. I, I just did. I just did. How much weight do you uh, cut? About like 15, 20. Wh- on yeah. fight week? No, no. Oh. No, the night before, Like bro. overall. Like, I'll cut like five pounds. Like, oh, fight, so yeah. on that Tuesday weigh-in, 
from the Tuesday weigh-in when you get there, right? They yeah. weigh you in when you get, for folks who don't know, the fighters arrive on fight week. Yeah. They, you have to do a bunch of stuff, including a, a initial weigh-in or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, from there, you only lose five. Yes. Okay, but geez, up 15 to 20? Yeah, well, from dieting. Yeah, I walk around like 40. So how much do you, because I know New York, they test it. How much did you put back on before um, the walkout? I think I got to like 37, 38. That's not crazy. Yeah, That's yeah. not crazy. Do you, do you know how much Molly was? No, I'm not sure. I, I would love to know that as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so do you have, I mean, you're still so young, it doesn't even matter, but yeah. do you have designs on 135 at some point? Uh, no, uh, right now I'm too focused. Like, focused on 25. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, I cut a decent amount of weight, but it's definitely where I feel the most athletic. Um, and I know I could be a champ at that weight, so. Do, Look, I you, don't want to call you out, but you got right knuckles that, that at least let us know you may have been in a fight recently. You want to, you want to reveal anything? Yeah. Yeah, dog, I, you know, I do my own kind of training at home. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh crap. There okay, that's kind of manly. I like that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, let me see your knuckles. How do I have manlier knuckles? Oh, well, I mean, I guess I'm a man, but uh, <laughs> you ha yeah, yeah, your one, hands look normal. Yeah, this one got a little beat up. Oh, there that one is camp. messed up. Yeah. Yo, you know who we had in here? Do you yeah. know uh, Corey Anderson? He was a USC fighter yeah, now, Bellator. Yeah, he's Jersey guy sometimes. Jer that's right. Yeah, he was yeah. from Jersey as well. Actually, I think he's in the Frankie Edgar yeah, kind yeah. of uh, Ricardo Almeida family. Anyway, yeah. he came in here and he had like, what do you want to say, BC? He was growing a fetus out of his finger. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he had a lump on here. He actually took it and knocked it on the table. And it sounded, I'm not doing oh a bit. God. It sounded like he had a walnut in there, right? You don't have any yeah. disfigurement yet? Uh, no, besides my <laughs> ears, I'm okay. Yeah, but everyone's yeah. got that. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. par for the course. No, no, everything's... Everything else has been fine. I mean, my knuckles definitely get beat up a little bit, like hitting pads, um, stuff like that. Oh, uh, to be 23 again. Holy yeah. shit. Not even yeah. Invincible. <laughs> Luke's whole shtick is about the dangers of being post-40 life, which we're all in, where you just, you know. But you know what's crazy? Uh, here, a true, this is a true story. I can't you. recover from anything. It's a true story. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. So you're 23, right? Yeah. Everyone at 23 fears 30, but you shouldn't. It's really not yeah. a big deal at all. 30's great. Okay. 30 is, no, seriously, yeah. 30 is great because okay. also your career should be more advanced. So you'd be making more money. Mm -hmm. should be a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm warning you, remember <laughs> this conversation. Okay. At 40, everything falls off a cliff. <laughs> it is It is fucking over. Yeah. It is over. Well, it is for two douchebags like us, but yeah, yeah. the drop off in everything. Award winning douchebag. Yeah, award winning right. douchebag. Mm, thank you. But I'm telling you, the drop off. So, so you don't have to worry about it. You got 17 years. Yeah. But young lady, you're going to turn back into a pumpkin. Believe that. <laughs> Believe that. Uh, okay. Back to your studying on, on media. Yeah. I've read there was a time where, or maybe you still hold that where, you know, look, you never know what's going to happen. You're entering your fight career, but there are a lot of post fight lifestyle job turns that still are in the fight game. Do mm -hmm. you still, you know, chase that dream of, of wanting as your fight game is developing to, to get into fight media at the same time and broadcasting and uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't really gone into it too much, but I'd definitely like to get into something like commentating and stuff like that. I think that would be that would definitely be something I'd want to do after fighting for sure, and then uh, maybe even while I'm still fighting. We had a great pioneer, uh, Laura Senko, on this couch in mm -hmm. our interview yeah. series here, and you know, we've we've always just shouted her out for for you know just being awesome. I mean, you know what yeah. I mean? But there's obviously a pioneering element in there. When you see that, does that also like open up more potential doors for you? There just hasn't oh, been definitely. a, there hasn't been a woman who fought in the UFC and then turned into a commentator yet. Like no one's yeah. done that yet. Right? Well, yeah. you know, some, some that have been active, Michelle Waterson, Angela Hill, who've slid mm -hmm. over into the desk it, a little desk bit, but, role, but not calling commentary fights is, role. is the next yes. level. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. I always saw Laura saying because she always did stuff at Invicta too. So I kind of saw her for, uh, for a bunch of years and seeing what she's doing is super cool. Um, that's definitely something I would want to do. And yeah, like you were saying, no like female, I guess UFC fighter has like actually commentated yet. So that'd be something that I'd definitely love to do. No, I want to talk about you as an MMA fan, right? Because yes. that's really yeah. what sparked all of this. Mm -hmm. Favorite fighters, <laughs> like what were the ones that you just like, you know, and I don't mean like in a, as a fan, like a young kid in that kind mm -hmm. of romantic way, like hold yeah. on to like, oh my God. Like me and Joanna. So yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah. not, that's a different kind of romance. No, no, but, she's, <laughs> she's got that dog in her. She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Who was it for you? Uh, you know, I remember watching um, Michelle Waterston and Jessica Penne fight uh, when I was like... In Invicta. Yeah, in Invicta. That was a brutal yeah, fight. That was such a crazy fight. Um, I remember watching them. That was definitely a crazy fight. And then I always liked watching uh, George St. Pierre too. Because um, especially because like, uh, like I've always been in like Henzo affiliates and stuff like right, that. So right. he was always uh, like one of our guys. And I mean, he was just like one of the greats. So I always loved watching him. Do you ever train with Danaher? Yeah, yeah, I did. What's that like? Um, it's definitely like intense in its own way. Um, you know, he's very kind of like matter of the fact that you go to class, he teaches and you drill. Um, there's not a lot of like 
like goofing or talking and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's very like, you know, he's kind of how he presents himself is how he is all the time. All right. So let me, let me, let me field you with a, like a series of pop quiz, not pop quiz, but like uh, I'll, I'll spit these classifications at you. You tell me where you come down on it. Ready? Here we go. Okay. Who's got in your mind, like whose guard do you just love to watch in MMA? Best guard Who's for you. Guard? doesn't have to be like all time number one, but just the one that speaks to you. Who's got a um, great guard? Oh, probably Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. yeah okay. She's really good uh, all right. How about this? Uh, like favorite, like uh, hard nosed wrestler type. Hard nosed wrestler type. Um, maybe like an Usman. Yeah. Usman Nurmagomedov or Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman. Kamara Usman. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you could go either direction there. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. All right. Like favorite kickboxing type fight. Again, not someone in kickboxing, but in MMA can kickbox. Um, probably Wonder Boy. Wonder Boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Who's got the sweetest hands? Just like when they're not working. Yours. Not me. When they're working combination, you just can't get enough. I was like watching Cater, Calvin Cater's. I feel like Cater. He like gets boxing. busy. Yeah. He has really sharp hands. All right. And um, I don't know. Like who who do you has like, a, does, does any fighter, male or female, past or present, have any kind of like mystique for you as a fan? A certain kind mm. of aura based on like well, all the said GSP, done. that's pretty high. Up. GSP's up there. Yeah, GSP's yeah. got to be one. Anybody else? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm not big into like believing people's like auras and stuff like yeah, she's that. She's not impressed by the, by the, I'm not, the yeah, I, I believe that also, but at the same time, yeah. if you got started as a fan, part of that still lives in I, you. I did start as a fan, but I think I kind of grew out of that so young that it's not really like yeah. something I think of that much. Okay. Anymore. Who's got, who's got your favorite ground to pound? Ooh. Like who's a surgeon with that He did shit? the same thing Probably. to Fedor. He asked him, what's your favorite Russian book? And then suddenly they canceled my interview right afterwards. Just, this is a story <laughs> she doesn't care about. Or yeah. no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Probably a Khabib's. Khabib's Ground and Pound. Is, That's the right pretty answer. Sick. Yeah. That's the right answer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a mark for old Khabib's. All right, so how yeah. angry are you that you can't make parlays anymore on the fights on the same <laughs> night as the park, you know? uh, I mean, I never sport that like in my life. So, I mean, yeah, I know some people are- Gambling, I gotta be honest. But, like it's everywhere. I think we have a sponsor, so maybe I'll like retract this. But <laughs> wouldn't be the first time you yeah. ragged on our sponsor. I mean, I'll just say this: not everybody has to do it, right? I think it's a fair yeah. way to put it. Not everyone has to do it. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. Are you talking about yeah. PEDs or gambling? Uh, a little bit of that. <laughs> you ever worry about that PEDs in sport? Um, I mean, not really. With USADA and stuff, I think we're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really thought of it too much. But so, you mean like in MMA or in other sports? No, in MMA. Are you worried um, that your I mean, opponents? I, know, I feel like. And not, not really in the UFC as much. Um, I mean, I know I have like heard like loosely that like maybe people that live in other countries not in the United States maybe don't get tested as much. I, mean, we I heard don't Bobby really Green know say about that, that today, right? Bobby Green yeah. did say something. Although, although Yuri, however you pronounce his name, probably not Yeezy, I'll tell you that much. It, uh, yeah, I, nobody knows is the really okay. the answer. Nobody who's not checked. Yeah. He, he's been tested like 50 times this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I don't really know um, that much about it. I haven't done like a lot of research or anything. So, it's like, I know we have USADA. I know like other MMA organizations maybe don't have uh, the same like testing. So, I'd be more worried. For people that are not like in the UFC. So, have you had any conversations about the UFC about your future? Have they ever like sat you down at any point, or I yeah, know, I right when she signed that four fight contract? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm like, saying, like, when the, in the course of signing that, did they tell you like a vision that they had for you? Uh, I know my manager kind of deals with that more. Um, and I mean, you know how things move in this sport; things can change so much. So I don't know if there's really like can't really plan things out in that sense. Um, so yeah, not no like exact vision. Yeah. Really? I mean, no, I mean, I, I know what I could do, so it's I don't really care who comes. I know I'll beat them. So. Did they tell you anything after you beat Molly? Did they say anything? Did Dana White or anybody else uh, or or any of the matchmakers say anything to you? Um, no, nothing really. I mean, other than like asking me to fight Talia, so it's like I know what that means, you know. Right. Yeah. Sort of. A, you more or less infer yeah. what it means. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I feel like you're gonna say it didn't bother me at all, and I don't remember it, but. At 23 years old, you walked out and did the walk at Madison Square Garden, as we talked about in this big fight with the well-hyped Molly Meatball, and you went in there and kicked some ass. What is it like when you exit that that entrance, that portal, and you're in the building, and you're at this this hallowed hall, and your name's on the screen? Yeah. It's just like any other moment. I mean, what? what no, is, I mean, <laughs> this cyborg loop. This, um, you know, I mean, I, I, in the moment, I think I was just, I was very focused on my fight. And it's like, I knew that's something I knew I always wanted to do. And I knew all my family and friends uh, were there to support me. So that was special to me. Um, but walking out, I'm always, I'm pretty focused. Um, I mean, I saw the crowd and everything. I heard the booze, but it's, I know what I, I want to do. And I know I need to stay focused when I get in there to do it. I, I can 
soak everything in the next day. So the next day, I feel like I definitely kind of like took it in and was able to, you know, uh, like appreciate how special that was. Yeah. You Ooh. ever thought yeah. about becoming a two sport champion in the uh, Dana White slap uh, combat league? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I haven't watched it. Um, Please don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> don't. Just don't be that. What was your walkout music? Uh, it's Remember the Name by Fort Minor. Fort Minor, that's related yeah. to Lincoln Park, right? Uh, they're, they're semi. I feel like they're yeah. overlapped, yes? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, look in the end, it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, exit, yeah. the exit is that way. The exit One is that thing, way. I don't know what, yeah, okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Are you a Fort Minor yeah. person? Uh, you know, it's funny. I feel like that song, uh, since I like grew up in the gyms, I remember hearing that because I, I remember one of the gyms I had, they probably had like the same playlist, like playing over and over again. And I remember hearing that song and I always thought that one was cool and tough. So I remember for my first like kickboxing fight when I was like, I don't know, 13, 14, I walked out to that. And then honestly, I've just been walking out to it ever since. I just kept it the That's same. That's it. Yeah, I love it. I feel like I hear it and I, I like just know it's time to go. All right. This is important because BC has dropped this a few times, but it, yeah. it's, uh, we haven't really talked about it. The nickname Cold Blooded, which first of all it's is bad. Cold Blooded. <laughs> I mean, do you have merch? I want to buy merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says Cold Blooded. Yeah, I'm about I to say, if you're, not selling, if you're not selling yeah. t-shirts already, I don't know what you're doing with your life. No, I didn't. How'd you get it? Uh, so my dad made it up like years ago. Dude, your dad is a genius. Can I point this out? <laughs> your father is a genius. He, the man predicted yeah. the future based off his own <laughs> fandom and is just making it a reality. Incredible. Yeah, he really has. Um, yeah, so when I was like growing up, like competing, um, I guess I was always kind of like the same way. I even am now. I kind of like always would walk out with just like kind of a straight face. Uh, I'd go, I'd win, uh, do what I have to do, and I kind of like would leave with a straight face. So he would, he, he kind of thought it was he thought it was funny. He'd be like, oh, cold blood. He's, he always thought it was like cold blooded. He would like joke about it. And he then when I actually wanted to fight, he's like, oh, he's like that would fit so good with your name, like Aaron Cold Blooded Blanchfield. Like, like it flows well. He's like, I think it matches who you are. And I was like, I was like, I kind of agreed with him. So I kind of went with it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely held true. Jesus Christ. Where can the where can yeah. the fans? We uh, yeah. yeah. How did how do they buy your merch? Oh, it's on millions. Uh, if you just go to like my Instagram, I have like a link in my bio, and you can go. To What's Twitter. your name on Instagram? Uh, Blanchfield underscore MMA. Couldn't just do yeah. Aaron. Had to make it. No, because Aaron Blanchfield was taken. <laughs> Everything else is taken. I'm just teasing. So. I'm teasing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just teasing. All right, BC, you want to do the uh, the honors here? I mean, I, 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 I've, it, we have to wrap it up now. I know you got to catch that train. You yeah, know, I kind of do actually. Yeah. All right, I enjoyed talking MMA with our guests. I'm sorry, you know, I'm getting your way today, but you're not in my way. You know, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't guess that she's a big MC Hammer fan, right? Do you know who MC Hammer is? Yes. Okay. Have you seen the Pumps and the Bumps video? It's <laughs> yeah, I think I have. Support yeah. Banana yeah. Hammock. Yeah. Yeah. It's the worst video. Uh, despite this being a Hammer-related joke, you can touch this because uh, our <laughs> oh, partner's the worst. here. Wow. Can you oh, tell yeah. he's a father of two? Yeah. What was the giveaway? Yeah. Our friends at Money Lion, they're one of our yeah. great sponsors here on the show. They know show. how to money. They know how to money. You can check Money Lion uh, out. They, we set up a contest with them, as you well know. Mm -hmm. And uh, BC, why don't you explain how this works? You this know, the fans had a chance to vote. And it was your moment there against, uh, well, look, I'll say when you beat the crap out of Miranda Maverick, I was like, holy crap, I've been sleeping. Yeah, on that caught my attention because I was but high on Maverick. Uh, the Molly McCann yeah. moment got everybody's attention. Uh, this is what Moneyline partners up with, with us, their hammer of the month, where fans can see who's under the radar but ready to jump through your TV screen. You were nominated a bunch of, with a bunch of other hammers. And you don't, uh, it's it's a tough competition because there's so many people from Dagestan that are just natural hammers. Yeah, in fairness, are, there was actually, I will say that the competition last month was, there was some good fighters who had good performances and we put it up to a vote and I haven't seen the results, but what I was told by all the producers was that yeah. your winning of this was overwhelming. <laughs> overwhelming. So the fans, the fans have voted. spoken. Moneyline.com slash morning combat. But uh, if we could, uh, thank you, Mark. We can hand this for the first time, a uh, first time, the Money Lion Morning Combat Hammer of the Month goes to Aaron Blanchfield. There we go. Round of thank applause you. for Aaron thank Blanchfield, you. everyone. It's an honor. So there it is. You can hold, hold it up for the camera right there. It's the She's one like, with I the- I got a spot no, 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 in my basement this, this, where this will be perfect. It's this weirdo right here. Oh, with here. The, he, nice. He's listening to uh, music so to cute. kill people too. Yeah, he kills um, what he eats. Unfortunately, they're so humans, cool. but that's fine. But here, our friends at Line set this up for us. Yeah, there's yeah. your hammer. Uh, yeah. You now are the first awesome. one to enter the Hall of Hammers. The You're the very the Hall of Hammers. Uh, we will award we'll we'll award one in subsequent months. But Aaron, we we, we the, the award goes to someone who just blew us away last month. Yeah. Who's making a name? Uh, it can't be a main or co-main event, so it's everybody else behind that. Oh, and okay. obviously, you had done great work against Molly. So congratulations Thank again. You. The fans over. Overwhelmingly voted for you here. Yeah. So have yeah, you found awesome. that from this Molly match? I mean, the DMs are blowing up. You you walk around maybe at the mall. People are like, oh, I know you. Is it happening? Is it happening for you, Aaron? Uh, yeah. Like in my towns, like local, like around where I live, uh, some people do definitely rec 
Nice people sometimes. from high school hit you up? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. What do they, what do they say? Uh, I don't know. It's, sometimes I don't even remember who it is, to be honest. They're like, <laughs> I, don't. <laughs> I don't even know you. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, because it's like, well, if we weren't friends then, it's like, we're not we friends now. You know? Yeah, um, Facebook request denied. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's definitely nice getting some, uh, noticing some fans and stuff and um, like where I live. It's all been good so far. Yeah, it's been really Well, nice. you've been doing a lot of winning. Yeah. You've been doing a lot of winning. Um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by our terrible studio, but we were happy to have you. <laughs> it's nice. And uh, shouts to mom. She brought her mom here. Shouts yeah. to mom over there. Hey, does uh, mom have a fight background or is she just, you know, the, the school of life toughened her up? Yeah, exactly. No, maybe she had some street fights. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing official though. No, no. Well, they, whatever they did, it worked. <laughs> it worked. It, yeah. It's uh, You have an uh, on your way. And uh, the Tyler Santos fight, can you tell us when that is? Uh, February 18th. February 18th. Yeah. Okay. That's did she sign cool. as well? Uh, I mean, that's the only thing I'm not sure because um, UFC hasn't announced it. But, I but mean, you're as far committed. As, yeah, I'm committed. I'm in it. So In it to win it. That's yes. a, that, that is a, yeah. first of all, it's an awesome fight. Do us a but solid. But that's a big-ass fight. That's a big-ass yeah, fight. Do us yes. a yeah. solid. How about this? I mean, you don't have to. You could tell us to go, you know. Yeah. Uh, She'll forget our names the second she leaves the studio, Luke. But we had a good run, though. Yeah, yeah. After <laughs> your win with uh, Tyla, mm -hmm. uh, we should get you either back in here or we'll get you on an interview for the show or something. Oh, yeah. let's, let's reconnect. Oh, I yeah, thought you were sure. going to do the, you know, get on that mic and be like, Train all day, MK by night. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Everyone, Aaron Blanchfield. <laughs>